Eight books that changed my life. I think every book I've read has changed my life in some way or another, a la Ralph Waldo Emerson. I cannot remember the books I've read any more than the meals I have eaten. Even so, they have made me. But I chose these eight books because they cause paradigm shifts in my thinking. Number one, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I don't think there will ever be a universally agreed upon set of moral values and principles for humans to follow. But for me personally, Meditations is the guide for the cultivation of good character. Let's turn to the spicy quote. Think not so much of what you lack as of what you have. But of the things you have, select the best and then reflect how eagerly you would have sought them if you did not have them. Just a quick note, the Dover Thrift translation is denser than the Hayes translation. Both are great, but uh, choose at your own risk. Number two, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've already heard me mention this book. Along with Kahneman's thinking, Fast and Slow, this book changed my entire view of human nature and convinced me that the most dangerous thing in the world is dogma. Haidt shows us how our moral reasoning is dictated almost entirely by emotion. We have an intuition, a, a snap judgment, and then we recruit our reasoning to justify that snap judgment. And it may sound sad, but people's self-interest and concern for their own reputation greatly influences moral reasoning. And that makes us huge hypocrites a lot of the time. Our moral thinking is much more like a politician searching for votes than a scientist searching for truth. If you think that moral reasoning is something that we do to figure out the truth, you'll be constantly frustrated by how foolish, biased, and illogical people become when they disagree with you. To make matters worse, different people have different foundations on which their morals rest. So you might have a hard time understanding why, for example, someone cares so much about the flag, but for someone else, they can't believe why you don't care about the flag. And that's the key sentence in the book. Morality binds and blinds. It brings tribes together and it blinds you to the ideals of other tribes. Height is out to dispel the myth of the Manichaean worldview that all human interaction can be framed as good versus evil. The moment we frame ourselves or someone else as always good, we raise them above criticism. The moment we frame someone as evil, they're beneath contempt and dumber than us. Helpful in war, maybe, but not in running a society. I left this book feeling an immense amount of compassion for other people. Everyone is helplessly righteous, and the only way to fix it is openness and love, not condescension and dismissiveness. Number three, A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. I've never laughed harder reading a book. This book destroyed my ego. It cut my heart out. You know, teenage me fancied himself a brilliant polemicist of culture. You know, the, the insufferable, no one's authentic and smart but me. The Holden Caulfield, everyone's a phony mindset. This book is just shots fired at teenage me. The nation as a whole has no contact with reality. That is only one of the reasons why I have always been forced to exist on the fringes of its society, consigned to the limbo reserved for those who do know reality when they see it. Reading this book, you'll realize how big the gap can be between your opinions and your actions. The main character writes incisive polemics about the contemporary culture, but is a complete nuisance to society through his actions. It's also just a really well-written book with good characters and beautiful prose. So just pick it up. Number four, How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. If you couldn't tell by the title, this book is about reading books. This is not a short read, nor is it an easy read, but if ever there were a book that encouraged me to read more, it's this one. There's no limit to the growth of a mind and Adler gives you the tools to do it. The ability to retain the child's view of the world with, at the same time, a mature understanding of what it means to retain it is extremely rare, and a person who has these qualities is likely to be able to contribute something really important to our thinking. Also, huge bonus, Adler gives you the essential works of the Western canon in the back of the book, so that's pretty cool too. Number five, Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman. This book cut my movie and TV consumption in half. 
When a population becomes distracted by trivia, when cultural life is redefined as a perpetual round of entertainments, when serious public conversation becomes a form of baby talk, when, in short, a people become an audience and their public business a vaudeville act, then a nation finds itself at risk. Culture death is a clear possibility. Spicy. All the hot button issues of today. We're too distracted. The news doesn't inform, it entertains. We overvalue emotion and undervalue reason. Politics is all about appearance and no substance. We don't read enough. It's all in there. Number six, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. One of the fascinating things about going through the American education system is that you can leave it having never learned basic economics. You often read Marx's Communist Manifesto if you take philosophy and history because it's an essential humanities text. And no doubt Marx's view of economics is an important one to have, but if it's the only one you get, that's really bad. So that happened to me. So after college, I picked up some of the bigger players like Mises and Keynes and Smith, but those are like huge tomes. And I just wanted an intro. So I picked up Hazlitt. It was probably the best intro I could find. So just teach yourself some basic economics, pick it up. It might change your view. Number seven. Oh, this one doesn't have a cover, so turn it around here. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I always get laughed at by recommending this book. People always say, it's such basic stuff, dummy. And yet, by laughing at me for recommending the book, they break all the basic rules in the book. Instead of condemning people, let's try to understand them. Let's try to figure out why they do what they do. That's a lot more profitable and intriguing than criticism, and it breeds sympathy, tolerance, and kindness. Dale Carnegie understood human nature incredibly well. We are reciprocal, social animals who want to be known and loved and to belong to something greater than ourselves. We like praise and we like people who are interested in our interests. In light of these truths, Carnegie lays out how to best communicate with people. Yes, it's persuasion, but everything is persuasion. All the most likable people I know follow the rules in this book. Whether they do it consciously or not, I don't know. But it's definitely a good book to have to know how to communicate well with people, no matter where you are in life. And finally, number eight, The Wisdom of Insecurity by Alan Watts. God, I love Alan Watts. This book might have gotten me back into reading after I stopped reading for a while. If my happiness at this moment consists largely in reviewing happy memories and expectations, I am but dimly aware of this present. I shall still be dimly aware of the present when the good things that I have been expecting come to pass, for I shall have formed a habit of looking behind and ahead, making it difficult for me to attend to the here and now. If, then, my awareness of the past and future makes me less aware of the present, I must begin to wonder whether I am actually living in the real world. Watts is the philosopher you read after a rough breakup or the loss of a friend or family member. He's also good if you have generalized anxiety. He's really funny and he puts you at ease with your place in the universe, much like Aurelius does in meditations. He made Buddhism accessible to me when I really needed it. And for that, I will be forever grateful to him and this book. <laughs> It was hard to choose this list. Uh, there are a lot of great books that I'd like to recommend. A few months ago, I did sort of narrow down a lot of the nonfiction books that I've read into sort of an essentials list, and that's linked on my Patreon. You can go and download it. You don't have to be a patron. Of course, I'd appreciate it if you became a patron. Uh, you know, you get stickers and a personal letter and even more things at higher levels. And I also send out a monthly newsletter uh, with a reading list and my thoughts from the month. So I'd, I'd of course appreciate that. But go over there, download the essentials list and, and look at some of those books. And if you're looking for even more cool books, I do a series on Instagram called Book of the Week where I review a book. And I'm always posting about books on Twitter. So just follow me there too. And finally, I just wanted to say I'm working on a pretty substantial project right now. It's going to take a while, but it'll be worth it. Thank you all for watching. Merry Christmas, 
Happy New Year, and I'll see you soonish.